Welcome back to the Slightly Crooked Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how I made this geometric pattern coffee table. I got the idea from the flooring in a Modern Builds Attic Renovation video. I started out by making a base for the table by breaking down a sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood into 2 foot by 4 foot sections using the Craig Rip Cut. I'll have links to everything I use in the description along with a more detailed description of all the steps. Next, I took a half sheet of maple plywood, which was really too big for my table saw, and ripped it down into about 5 inch sections. Put my tripod too close to the work table and stopped to move it so it would knock it over. I was planning on making two tables, so I broke down the entire piece. One table takes just about a half sheet of plywood. Next, I set up a spacer block and moved the fence back to the same width as the strips I just ripped. I set my crosscut sled to 30 degrees to make the angle for the geometric pattern. I spent the next 20 minutes knocking these pieces out. First cut is just waste to establish the angle. Then you can bring your piece all the way to the spacer. After cutting the first few pieces, I checked to make sure my angle was set correctly and how everything was fitting together. The spacer is there to prevent the cut piece from getting trapped between the fence and the blade kicking it back towards you. Next, I laid out all the pieces on the plywood base. I applied some glue to the first piece and clamped this one in place. This piece is critical as it will establish how the entire table fits together. I nailed the edge of each piece at an angle to secure it while the glue dries. I'm using one inch brad nails which haven't gone through the base yet. It would be pretty difficult to clamp each piece once you get to the second row, so nailing is your best option. For this last row, I'm nailing as close to the inside of the table as possible, since part of it will be trimmed off. The last odd pieces are clamped, again so I can trim them off without hitting any nails. A few hours later, after everything dried, I set up a straight edge and ripped the table down to its final dimensions. Although I forgot the circular saw blade spins in the opposite direction of the table saw and had a bit of tear out on the top. For the next cuts, I made sure to flip it over. For the last edge, I just sent it through the table saw. For the edge of the, of the table, I ripped a 1x4 piece of maple in half. This made the edge slightly thicker than the edge of the table to hide the hairpin leg bases. After that, I glued and screwed the edge using pocket holes and a lot of different clamping methods to make sure everything lined up correctly. After everything was attached, I used some Wonderfill wood filler in maple to fill in all the cracks. Since I'm not very accurate on the table saw, there are a lot. I applied a minimal amount to each crack and then wiped away the excess with a damp shop rag. After sanding everything down, I applied two coats of Danish oil, which really brought out the color in the maple. Then I attached the hairpin legs using the screws provided. It seemed pointless to use any other type of leg since the main focal point is the top. Getting fancy with the legs would only distract from that, since I love how this turned out. 